So we're so lucky to have two FDA approved products in uh, Idacel or Abecma and Siltacel Carvicti uh, for relapse refractory myeloma. You know, these are two CAR T cell products targeting BCMA, which we refer to as BCMA targeting or BCMA directed CAR T cell therapies. And now we also have the bispecific antibody teclistamab, which has been FDA approved, which is also a BCMA directed um, uh, therapy, although not a CAR T. So the question that we're all asking as a field is, can we do better? You know, there are several approaches that are currently being investigated to try to potentially improve upon what we've already done as a field uh, in CAR T cell therapy for myeloma. Um, and, and they have a few different approaches, some of which are being um, discussed and presented at ASH uh, 2022. So one is to go after multiple targets. So BCMA is a really good target. We know it works, but might we be also including an additional target alongside it? So CD19, which is expressed on many B cells, um, not as much on, on myeloma cells, but the thought is to combine BCMA and CD19 together as a, um, a dual CAR T cell approach. Um, that's been investigated. And um, actually, there's a really interesting study, uh, Abstract 366, that's looking specifically uh, and in the newly diagnosed population, which I think is really interesting. Um, the other option is to go after a different target completely, you know, put BCMA aside, or maybe patients have progressed off of a BCMA therapy. Well, what about GPRC5D? This is becoming, um, you know, uh, really another target of, of real interest. We had a New England Journal article that looked at this um, uh, from the uh, Sloan Kettering Group. And now we have... Um, uh, now we have another uh, abstract, number 364, presented by Susan Ball, um, that is looking at this approach as well uh, through a product with B BMS. Um, another option would be to improve the persistence of CAR T cells. Maybe we have to alter the phenotype of these T cells. We know that there are certain T cells that are going to certainly last longer and potentially lead to a longer response. Uh, so abstract 566 presented, uh, I'm one of the authors on this study, uh, my colleague um, Luciano Costa will be presenting this one um, on a, uh, a different sort of approach to um, getting the, the best potential CAR T cells uh, into the patient to improve persistence. Uh, one of the big issues with CAR T though is that it just takes time to manufacture these cells. So there are two ways to get around that. One is to potentially use off-the-shelf CAR T cells from donors, which has been done and is, is complicated, but is currently in the works. But another really fascinating approach would be simply just to make it quicker, make the manufacturing process quicker. So we don't have much in the way of, of abstracts at ASH looking at this, but we've seen them at ASCO and EHA previously looking to improve the turnaround time. Um, Novartis PHE 885 is one of those. And then the, lastly, it's about maybe moving um, therapy to earlier lines. Um, we have abstract 3354 and 361, both of which are looking at Siltacel and Idacel in patients who have had early relapses. So the theory, you know, you're trying to use this earlier on in therapies for patients who really need it. Uh, and I, I guess the true last one would be, are there approaches to improve um, the um, uh, immune tolerance of these drugs. So we know that drug antibodies can be uh, developed in patients against CAR T cells, and maybe that leads to decreased persistence. So um, the Arcelix DDBCMA, a de-immunized domain, is being used to try to decrease um, the um, uh, development of antibodies, anti-drug antibodies, against CAR T cells. So there's, there's a lot going on. And I think we still don't fully understand which of these approaches or how many of these are going to be effective, and then we'll, we'll see them uh, move forward.